Hi, this is your host, Apni Bharatiya, and today we have two guests, Arpit Joshi Pura, GM of Networking and Edge IoT at the Link Foundation, and Kandan Kadarwal, Technical Steering Committee Chair of NEPHEW. Kandan, Arpit, it's great to have you both on the show. Great to be here. Great to be here. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about uh, the release one of NEPHEW project, but I would love to know what is the project all about? Uh, of course, the story of the name and origin, why it was created, what problem the community saw that you folks wanted to solve that led to this project. It's over a year now since this project has started. Uh, it was founded by a set of very motivated uh global ecosystem vendors, service providers, and thanks to Google for taking the initiative. The problem uh, Nephew wanted to solve was cloud native automation. And for that, we gathered a team, you know, a community together, launched the project under the Linux Foundation last year, and it's been a year. And since then, the momentum has been tremendous. Uh, from 25 founding members, we have tripled. There are over 75 now. Um, all of the communities uh, participate in the global TSCs. They work uh, on creating a very simple extension of Kubernetes and implementing uh, what is called cloud native automation, right? Now, from a vision perspective, as you know, the markets between telecom, enterprise, and cloud were all distinct five years ago. And with cloud native principles, things started coming together. The carriers relied on the public clouds. The public clouds and carriers relied on enterprises to use them. And so we started looking architecturally and it was very clear that we needed a new way of doing cloud native network automation. So that's how uh, we started. And obviously the name came about uh, very interestingly. Kandan, you want to take that on in terms of what it means and how, how we got that? Nephew uses income-based automation. This is a much needed uh, uh, automation technique that is needed by the telecom. And uh, all the legacy automation system which were there before, uh, usually those are fire and forget. Uh, the automation sends out all the configurations and then primarily uh, you know, automation leaves to the monitoring system to monitor and actually put up the, uh, take care from there. But Nephew actually uses this intent-based automation to sort of like uh, uh, take the configuration of the user, whatever it is the user want to accomplish, and then it converts into a configuration mechanism that goes and actually deploys this actually in a large scale. And uh, this simplifies the automation quite a bit uh, compared to the legacy automation approach. So the Nephew stands for you know, intent-based automation and the Kubernetes-based approach that uh, what the community is uh, needed at this moment to make this automation perfect for uh, telecom. How you have seen the evolution of the project because cloud native world is evolving, evolving at a very fast pace. At the same time, if you look at Linux Foundation, you folks have, you, you folks are like foundations of foundations, so you do collaborate with each other a lot. So how you have seen the evolution of the project uh, and collaboration with other Linux Foundation project, if anything like that also happened? Yeah, so I think you, you said it nicely, right? Like foundation of foundations. Similarly, Nephew is cloud of clouds, right? Just from a vocabulary perspective. And uh, we are trying to make sure that uh, the, the position of Nephew is very accurately architected in the end-to-end -end systems, right? So Nephew is not aimed at solving world hunger. It has a very specific purpose uh, whether it be, uh, you know, within telecoms, within cloud and within enterprises, right, across, but solving intent-based cloud native automation, right? So that's the purpose. Now, with that said, uh, because it is a Linux Foundation project, we were able to have collaboration between Nephew and other adjacent projects, right, specifically in Linux Foundation networking, uh, whether it's kind of ONAP on the top, whether it's CNCF, uh, whether it's Kubernetes and some of the other uh, CNCF projects, right? And we are also looking at, in, the f in some of the future releases, looking at collaboration with, uh, with the edge and, and the access, specifically the RAN layers, right? Uh, so because of the community being part of Linux Foundation, uh, we were able to include Nephew in events, in mini summits, in working groups, as well as in developer and test forum that allowed for that 
collaboration to make sure that we can provide an end-to-end open source-based solution and not just a silo project. Uh, Kandan, I also want to talk to you a bit about when we look at some of these projects. Uh, Linux is a very good example. It was created to solve a specific problem. Not today everybody uses it. With, with these open source projects, you know, you folks create it solving one problem. And when we look at the whole cloud native community, folks look at the project. Have you also seen any use cases on that few where you're like, you know, of course, it's in early phase, but where you're like, not that it was not your intention, but you are excited about those use cases, which are actually coming back and further improving the projects? Yes, I think this is a great question. Uh, so the use case what a nephew is looking at is like a complete entire automation of the cloud stack and all the interdependencies and the network functions for the telecom. And this is much needed because you know usually there are automation systems to address the cloud infrastructure, address the interdependencies like the SRIOV, DPTK, and these sort of configurations. Then network function has like entirely a, a different automation. So Nephew brings actually the, the full uh, cohesive uh, automation techniques across all this entire stack. And this simplifies the quite a bit for automation techniques for the, for the telecom. And uh, the beauty is that uh, you know, it uses the Kubernetes, uh, which is actually the proven technology that everybody is using to run the container. So it uses the Kubernetes to automate the Kubernetes. That's the real beauty of it. And the, the other important aspect, as you pointed out, is that you know, uh, there is a gap in the industry in terms of the configuration management for the, the entire stack for the telecom. And the nephew addresses that particular gap in a very efficient way. And it uses the Kubernetes resource model. And there's also a technique called the configuration as a data, which actually structures the configuration into a particular uh, form. And that is the efficiency that the nephew brings in. And this is much needed by the industry as of today. And R1 delivers that fundamental building blocks that is necessary for telecom to actually use this technique. And I would add, in terms of the use cases that are right on the horizon, now that we have a framework in place and we have kind of the first code drop in place, right, beyond this Google Seed code that the community worked on, um, I call it multi-X, right? What that means is multi-cloud, multi-vendor network functions and multi-domain, right? Uh, those three use cases are now looking very promising and the community is going to focus on those. If you look at the whole tele telecom industry, uh, they are going through their own transformation. I, 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 now they are way ahead of uh, the curve now, but uh, from black boxes to white boxes, commodity hardware, open source technologies, can you also talk about the impact that you have seen over years of all these open source technologies, the, the work that you folks at Linux Foundation have done? Because there is, first of all, so much code to be written. Also, some of the industries are not, they don't have that many players as a lot of other industries, so there is too much work to be done. But this open source project, they, they help them move faster, it helps them collaborate. So talk a bit about, uh, not only just impact of, of course, LF networking and the, the project that you folks are associated with, but open source in general. 10 years ago, as you said, the entire networking stack, whether it's carry, uh, service providers, cloud service, or telecom service providers, cloud service providers, or enterprise networking, all proprietary, all vertically integrated. We all know that, right? Then came Open Daylight, you know, Open Stack, some of the other original open uh, initiatives that kind of started this revolution, right? Now, in order to look at networking, you have to look at three places in the network, right? There is the access layer, right? Whether it's RAN access, mobile access, enterprise access. Then there's the edge layer, right? Edge computing that we call it, right? Whether it's IoT or, or anyway. And then there's the core and the cloud, right? There's the three layers. In the last three to five years, what we have seen is the core and the cloud layers have been completely enabled by open source networking, right? All the way from the data plane, right? DPDK, FDIO, uh, OPI, et cetera, to the orchestration layers, to the intent-based automation like Nephew, to closed group control, OSS, BSS, things like ONAP, right? Controllers like Open Daylight, all the way to uh, EBVF lifecycle management projects like LEAF, things like that, right? Everything from top to down on the core is now possible with open source. The same thing is happening in Edge. There is a lot of 
blueprints that have been created by LF Edge and other Edge communities to allow for Edge and IoT deployments to be built off open source software. The last piece of the puzzle is the access, okay? Enterprise access is still in an early stage, okay? Because they are going to utilize this, this highly knowledgeable intent-based pipe created by the public clouds and telecom providers to take services, right? And they don't need to build their own infrastructure, right? That's the enterprise access. But the RAN part of it, the mobile access, is still not open, okay? Only 50% is open. So if you're familiar with the ORAN architecture, there are seven components, right? Four of them are open, like SMO can be built on ONAP pieces, NFVI is open, things like that. But the CUDURU, which are the crux of ORAN, not open, right? And if they're open, the licenses are not uh, open source friendly, okay? So if, uh, long story short, I think we have about a couple of years, three years to go before your end-to-end -end systems can be all enabled by open source and vendors can differentiate on the top, okay? So that's a quick summary. When we look at all these projects, uh, and as I can then also saying talk about, there are sometimes overlap, there are sometimes gaps, and you know we are trying to fill the gaps. But uh, of course, if you look at the CNCF landscape, uh, there are too many logos. Can you also talk about um, when you look at this, you know, uh, zoom out, zoom in on nephew? How does it kind of integrate with other projects, you know, or how do you folks leverage other projects? If you can talk about that, uh, that would be great as well. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start and then Kanan can help. Uh, there is a philosophy um, difference, first of all, in the way CNCF uh, community manages projects and the networking community manages projects, right? Uh, and the philosophy difference is, um, let there be multiple options and solutions and the best solution and the most traction wins. Okay, that's the CNCF philosophy. And the reason for that is that is how cloud native and cloud engineers work, okay? In telecom and networking, most of the developers are, are business driven and they are not tens of thousands of engineers. So resources are still limited which means we have a philosophy that we don't want five different ways to solve the same problem, okay? So Linux Foundation and me particularly, I mean, I'm extremely um, uh, interested in making sure that projects as they come in are harmonized. If there is an overlap, the technical communities understand the overlap. In some cases, they allow, in some cases they merge. But most of the projects that we have, have you know, a, a very simple place in the network that are still not, that, the, that, those, those, that software has not yet resolved in an open solution, like Nephew, for example, right? So if you look at the stack of the software, um, and we can send you the, the, the overall slide on that, that but you know, from the data plane up, uh, you've got Kubernetes, Nephew sits on Kubernetes, right? and on top sits kind of ONAP and then all the others, right? So that's kind of how they have been interoperating uh, from a solutions perspective. Uh, and, and then there, there, there are other projects like MCO that we had, which will probably be harmonized with Nephew since Nephew is, is kind of a more efficient way of doing it. I think Nephew is a completely a complementary project and this is much needed by the telecom uh, in order to achieve the efficiency of the automation. And uh, uh, Nephew primarily focus on the domain automation, but including actually the cloud infrastructure, the interdependencies, and from a use case perspective, uh, it can automate 5G and other workloads that uh, the telecoms would have, that including the fixed wireless and the private 5G and the transport network. And this goes on like whatever the telecom use cases, like this can be addressed using the Nephew. And as I said, like it's very complementary project. And uh, there was a gap in the industry in terms of like, uh, there is no configuration management best practices and implementation method using a cloud native approach. And if you fills that gap, and that is why we see that, you know, like there is a, uh, you know, 75 plus companies part of this particular journey. And they have been very actively participating in the PSC and as well as contributing the code. 
So we do see like a lot of traction with the NFO and with especially with the NFO R1 that the people can really see the, the food that coming out of this particular community. Can you talk about some of the, the major features, highlights of uh, this uh, specific release? Sure. And uh, Nephew R1, it uh, delivers the fundamental building blocks that is necessary to actually run the automation. And you can think of this as a control plane that is based on Kubernetes. And it also uh, provides the GitOps approach for management of the entire configuration. And it provides the set of uh, templates you can think of this as a configuration template, so what we call as CRDs, and those CRDs can be used to automate like you know the entire stack. And then it also demonstrated the network function automation using uh, the same approach what I just talked about. And uh, the community is looking forward to address like the many other use cases, but initially they focused on the 5G use case, and uh, in R2 and beyond, like additional use cases of telecom would be interested as well. Can you talk about what are the things that you folks are working on next? What are the things that are in the uh, not exact exact pipeline roadmap, but I want to just get a glimpse of hey, these are the things that you folks are working on. Sure, I think community has to decide what the exact functionalities that uh, has to be delivered, and uh, there's already a planning going on in the community in terms of like what is that R2 is going to look like, and uh, I think the mainly the uh, uh, you know enhancement of the R1. Uh, the fundamental building blocks, uh, plus like the supporting additional use cases. As Arpit mentioned that the intention of Nepio is to support multi-cloud, multi-domain, multi-network function, and uh, primarily standardizing the, the configuration methodologies and structure. And that is a huge benefit for the industry. So the, the Nepio R2 will focus on those areas. But again, the community already started the work and we are also looking forward to our uh, second development summit for uh, planning the entire R2 as well. How you have seen the growth of the community and what are the challenges you're seeing uh, the, the community is facing where you're like, hey, you have to engage with more players or you're like, no, we are we are, we are a very good position. The players that we need are already there. All we have to do is just keep improving the project. So there's two parts to it, right? One is in the formation phase, right, which is just completed. Uh, you want to keep the community to uh, the developers who actively contribute, right? Um, you know, they, they are the ones who actually make it happen, right? I've always said open source is a duocracy. You do, you lead, okay? You can't demand anything, you know, because there's no vendor supplier relationship here, right? So uh, People who have been participating, including carriers like, you know, Bell and Telus and Orange and DT and, you know, Airtel, Geo, you can get all the logos, right? Uh, they have all participated with the right engineers, right? Uh, and again, thanks to Google for the seed code and the participation and the technical leadership, uh, a lot of it has been sort of uh, kept in the neutral governance where people can bring in ideas and kind of develop this, right? So, so the community, and then there's a whole, the top 10 vendors back it with engineers and things like that. So that's the formation phase, right? That's what it takes to get the release out. As we move forward, right? Um, there, is, um, there is a growth that is planned where the second adopters, if you may, right? Not the, the initial founders, but the second adopters. And there's a whole wave of, you know, uh, companies within LF networking or LF Edge or, or, or CNCF or outside the core Nephew community that not only will contribute, but they will utilize Nephew, right, into their blueprints, into their solutions, right, uh, and, and then eventually contribute. So we, uh, we feel that that is the next phase of this project and we are working to get that traction going, you know, jointly working with uh, with the LF networking teams and 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 beyond. Okay, so that's kind of from a from a big picture perspective. And Kandan leads the technical community, so maybe you know a couple of words on on how the community, uh, you know, jives together would be great. I think community did a very phenomenal uh, work with respect to Arwen, and I think I see that uh, huge excitement to sort of like work towards R2 as well. And I think you can see in the social media, like the people are like super excited about R1 and what's coming in R2 and beyond. Uh, so I think the 70 plus company coming together in a very short time frame and uh, really forming the full structure around the community and keeping the process less and more code, as Arthur said, I think you know that was the focus of this community. I think the community did an amazing job. 
and with a very short time frame in delivering R1, as, uh, as Orpis said. Uh, you know, they took the Google C code and further enhancing that C code and in delivering R1 in a very short time frame is like really phenomenal. Arpit, uh, Kandan, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this project. And uh, I can see there are a lot of, you know, things that are in the pipeline. So I would love to chat with you folks again. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Sopnil, uh, thank you very much. Yeah.